everyone, welcome to this tutorial. It is the absolute easiest everyday makeup, minimal products, but a really pretty pulled together look at the end. If you wanna look a little bit fresher, a little bit more awake, have a little bit more even skin tone and look like you've got it together, even if you don't, this is for you. I'm gonna tell you what you need in case you want to follow along and get ready with me. You're gonna need a facial sunscreen that you like and a concealer that matches your skin tone, not too light. You're gonna want a mascara, a brow gel if you have one, some setting powder. It doesn't have to be this kind. It can be the pressed kind, the tinted kind, whatever you have, a lipstick and a cream blush. If you don't have a cream blush, you can use your lipstick as a cream blush and that actually works very well because it ties everything together with the same tones so you don't have to worry about matching stuff. I've also got a couple of optional extra add-ins if you want them. Those are a brow pencil, if you're like me and you need a little help in the brow department, and a lip pencil, but you do not need them. These are just like little add-ins to enhance the look. And also an eyelash curler if you own one, but again, it's not essential. We're going to start off with sunscreen because it is the most important step in your skincare regime. And this personally, I think, is a great base for makeup. This is the Artless Glow Base by Hamish. And this has a pearlescent tint that's gonna, I can get some out, it's getting a bit empty. This has a pearlescent tint that adds a really nice glow to the skin, but you can use any sunscreen that you like. So just massage in your sunscreen. And don't forget your neck because uh, the neck is also very important. And that's the part that ages us, you know, because people remember to put skincare on their face. They remember to put sunscreen on their face, ears, but they forget the neck. And the neck starts to get all crepey and makes us look old. We are not done with the sunscreen though, even after all that, because we're gonna combine our sunscreen with some concealer to make a sort of foundation-y base. Now, this is great because you can customize it however you want. You want just a little tint of concealer, just a little light coverage, you can do that. You want a little bit more, just add some more concealer, change the ratios and you're good to go. So I'm gonna do this on the back of my hand. There you go, foundation. And all I'm gonna do is massage this into the skin with the fingers. Now, the advantage here is because I've got sunscreen on and then I've got the exact same sunscreen product mixed in with my concealer. The two things should blend very nicely together because when you start using a lot of different products on your face, as I usually do in my uh, makeup routines, sometimes you find that different products don't like each other and they don't mesh well together. And sometimes you'll have primers that don't like foundations or concealers that don't like foundations. But here, because you're using the exact same product twice, you should get a really nice easy blend. Now you can use any concealer that you like, preferably one that is very close to your skin tone, not too light, and something that has a reasonable amount of coverage so that you're actually getting something out of this here. I'm just blending a little bit of this down the neck so that everything is matching. We don't have a line around our jaw where our makeup starts. Moving on to our concealer. Again, when we're talking about formulas working well together, because you've just used this concealer watered down as your foundation, it should blend very nicely on top of what we've got going on. So the exact same concealer. And again, I'm gonna put it on my hand. I'm not gonna put it directly onto my face because I don't want it to look too heavy. And what I'm gonna do is take my ring finger, dab it in, so I've got some here, rub my little ring fingers together. So I've got some for each eye. And dab, 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 dab onto the brow to cover any discoloration on the eyelids. Of course, if you're not confident using your non-dominant hand, you can just use your dominant hand twice. I personally prefer to take a double-handed approach and uh, get things done a tiny bit quicker. Now you can obviously add a bit of concealer anywhere that you have a problem area. So I have a few little breakouts here. So again, I'm just gonna dab my finger into this concealer, dip, dip, dip and carefully 
dab on where I want it and then I'm going to use a clean finger to blend. Just tap, 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 tap. I feel like I want a little bit of extra concealer just on my nose. So I'm going to tap, 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 tap down the bridge where I want most of the coverage. And again, taking a clean finger, spreading it out. I also have a little bit of redness on my chin, so I'm going in with some concealer there too. A tiny bit around the nostrils here. A lot of people get redness here. We are ready to move on to our next step, which if you have cream blush, is blush. Now I'm a big fan of cream blush as opposed to powder blush because I feel like it melts really nicely into the skin. You can make it look really natural and like the glow is coming from within you. Like you're naturally rosy. You get that impression with cream blush. more easily than you can create it with powder blush. Like I said, if you do not have cream blush, you can use your lipstick as cream blush. The only people I would advise not to do that is if you're acne prone, because obviously the formula of lipstick has those emollient, creamy kind of things in it that could clog your pores and make you break out. So I'm gonna use Glossier Cloud Paint. This is the shade Puff, which is just a lovely pink. And now these are pigmented so I'm just gonna put like a little bit on my finger here and this even this is probably gonna be too much and what I'm gonna do is literally just tap it again between my fingers and spread it out across the three middle fingers here make sure it's kind of even so I don't get too much on one cheek and not enough on the other now think about the placement of where you want your blush do you want it to look rosy and sort of flushed and youthful, more sort of close into the centre of the face. If you have a rounder face, maybe you want to keep it out further on the cheekbones to add a little more like angularness to the face. For me, my face is quite angular already, so I prefer to dif like disperse my blush quite widely so that it's not too concentrated on the cheekbone. So, I'm going to smile. And tap. And I like to bring my blush all the way up onto my forehead because that is just my style. I like to look flushed, I like to look like I maybe got a little bit too much sun. And I can always take this back down again if I get it too much with a little bit of the foundation-y mixture that I still have. So for me personally, like I said, a really dispersed blush is how I like to go. So I'm just tap tap tapping this everywhere pretty much up onto the top of the brow onto the forehead after a flush i'm gonna put a tiny bit on the nose so that it looks like a bit of a natural flush here and i'm gonna even gonna put a little bit just here on the chin at the bottom like i got caught in the sun I'm also going to take some cream blush into my eye socket. So I'm going to take a tiny bit more. This time I'm just going to keep it on my two middle fingers. I'm going to tilt my head back so I can see my eye socket here. And then I'm going to push it up into the eye socket. And then blend up towards the brow. I don't want to bring it down too far on the sides here because I don't want my eye to look droopy. So I want to keep it up. Keep it up. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. And that is something that I am happy with. And I think I am ready to move on to powder. Now for powder, you have a bunch of different options. You have the loose type of setting powder here. You can also get pressed powder that's translucent, something like this from Rimmel. Or you've got pressed or baked tinted powder like this one here from Kiko. This is the Radiant Fusion Powder. But I'm going to use my favourite, which is the loose one. It's the Gosh Prime and Set. Now, it's got a little sort of sifting mechanism in here so the powder doesn't go everywhere. I'm going to take a very small setting brush because I'm only going to set certain areas of my face. Now, 
If you are very oily and you want to set your whole face, you know, obviously use a bigger brush. Um, or if you have um, lines, if you're more mature, I would recommend setting anywhere that you have lines, just because where you have lines, like I have around my eye here, because I'm almost 30, you're going to get creasing and the concealer and the, the makeup is just going to bunch up in the lines. I get that around my smile lines as well. So basically, anywhere you have olive oil, anywhere you have lines and anywhere where you put concealer are places that you want to make sure that you set with your powder. So I'm going to concentrate on the eyes where I've got quite a lot of makeup that could crease in the lid here, the nose, around the mouth and the chin, which is where I get oily. I put some concealer up here, so I'm going to put some up here and balance it out on this side by putting the same thing over here. Now when you only set part of your face, you will encounter the problem where you have a matte section and a less matte section, and sometimes there's a dividing line between the two, which is obvious as you turn your head and light catches. So what I recommend is you take a small amount of powder on the brush and just flick. Blend those two sections together with a little bit of powder so that it's more of a gradient and less of a straight line. And that is all we are doing for the complexion. So moving on to brows, here's where you have an optional product. If you want, you can use a brow pencil. Now, whether or not you need to fill in your brows depends on a couple of things. Obviously, some people have more blessed brows than me. To begin with, if your brows are naturally thicker, you're probably not going to need to fill them in for a natural kind of look like this. If they're not perfect, if they have a few gaps or like sparse spots, like it's not the end of the world for a natural everyday look. Your brows do not need to be perfect. Also, depending on your hair colour, that will affect whether you need to fill in your brows. So someone like me who has dark coloured brow hairs, but they're a bit sparse, as someone who has dark head hair, I fill in my brows. Now, when I used to dye my hair, my hair used to be kind of honey blonde color, I basically used to leave my brows alone and just go with my natural brows because as a blonde, my brows actually looked very fitting and natural and people thought that like I was naturally someone with much lighter head hair and like my brows just went with that so I didn't need to touch them. But now that my hair is back to its natural color, I do need to kind of fill them in to create that balance. I'm gonna brush first. Now I'm not gonna go crazy filling them in because this is a natural, everyday, easy kind of look. I'm just gonna give them a little bit of help. And I'm just gonna put a few little extra strokes through my brow, nothing crazy. I'm not trying to change the shape, make them more arched or anything. I'm just Filling in the shape that is already there. This, by the way, is from Beauty Pie, which is the shade Perfect Brown. Brow gel is just something that can make your brows look a little bit more fluffy, make the hairs look more defined. And if you have slightly unruly brows, can keep them in place. Now, this is a clear brow gel. I personally find a clear brow gel much easier to work with than a tinted one because if you get a tinted brow gel on your skin it can go in a big smudge it's hard to get off it looks unnatural in your brows clear you can just whack it on and you do not have to worry about it this is glossier this is a slightly more expensive one but it's really really good see how i look like i have so much more brow now <laughs> this brow gel really is magical like it's worth the 15 pounds or whatever it cost. Now for your eyes, like I said, if you have an eyelash curler, I would recommend curling your lashes because curling your lashes just lifts the eye and makes you look a lot more awake. Now, this is a traditional clampy eyelash curler. I have a heated eyelash curler. Don't worry, it's not like a straightener. It's not gonna get super hot and burn your eye. It just gets warm enough that you can push up and shape the brows, it obviously, takes a bit longer than using a clampy one but it's much more gentle and if you're worried about like catching your skin in a clamp I'd recommend something like this you can get these it's like a random different brands off of Amazon this one is USB chargeable so you plug it into the computer and it recharges I am going to use my preference which is the heated one I'm going to turn it on and let it warm up for a second 
and then all I'm going to do is push like this against my eyelashes, hold it and wait until they hold more of that shape. You can also get closer to the tip and push the tips up to create additional curl. Now that I have curled lashes, it's time for mascara. Now I'm going to use a waterproof mascara. I'm going to use a waterproof formula. This is the Hamish Smudge Stop mascara, and it's quite a natural looking formula. So if I'm doing a more full on makeup look, I tend to layer it over other mascaras, um, just for the benefit of its waterproofness. But today I'm going to use it by itself. Now, depending on how you want to look. You can apply mascara just to the upper lashes or to the lower lashes as well. Ooh, getting it on my uh, skin, don't worry about that. There's ways of getting that off. Don't know why I always put mascara on better on my left eye with my left hand. My left eyelashes almost always look better than my right ones and I honestly have no idea why. I know a lot of people have that with their brows, like they have one brow that behaves and one brow that doesn't behave. So mascara only on the top lashes will give you a slightly more natural look. It will look even more natural if you use a brown shade. Like if you have blonde hair and you're doing a really natural everyday look, I would seriously recommend getting a brown or black brown mascara. As someone with very dark hair, I just stick to black usually, but you can do a very natural, very beautiful look with a brown mascara if you are someone with lighter hair. I know it can be quite difficult to find brown mascaras, but they are out there. I will try and um, find some ones that I've tried in the past and put some links down below so that you can um, see some brown mascara options. Now, obviously I've got a little situation up here. I'm actually just gonna Flick that off with a brush. This mascara, I tell you what, this mascara is great for if you make mistakes because it comes off of the skin so easily. If you get it on your like under eyes, if you get it like up on your eyeshadow, you can get it off with a brush or with a spoolie like the bleh, spoolie like the kind that is on an eyebrow pencil. Now, in my opinion, the easiest way to make your makeup look like you put an actual effort and you have it together is to do a really nice lipstick. If you think of the screen sirens, the Hollywood movie stars of the 40s and the 50s, a lot of their face makeup and their eyes is not that over the top, it's pretty natural, but then they have just a beautiful, perfect lip and it turns it into like a really well put together look, like they made a ton of effort just with some lipstick. Now, like I said, optional is lip liner. Um, there are three advantages in my opinion, to having a lip liner. One, as we get older, we get fine lines around the edges of our lips. And when we put lipstick on, our lipstick can bleed. That means it just little bits travel up the lines and you get this kind of blurred effect where the lipstick is traveling outside of the edge of the lip. It's not pretty and once it happens, it's really hard to clean up and undo it. With a lip liner, you have something which is a thicker, waxier formula that is gonna prevent your more emollient, smoother textured lipstick from bleeding outside of the lip lines. So that's the number one advantage. Number two, you can fill in your entire lip with a lip liner um, underneath your lipstick and it will give you a much longer lasting look. And the third advantage of a lip liner is that you can use it to change the shape of your lips. And that is what I'm gonna do and talk you through right now. So the first time I tried to overline my lips, it was an absolute disaster. Basically, I watched someone else doing it, tried to copy what they did, overlined way too much of my lip, and I just, I looked, I looked so ridiculous. I can't even explain how bad it looked. And definitely learning how to overline your lips in a way that suits your own personal lip shape takes practice. But I'm gonna talk you through a way that I think is a good way to learn how to do it. And the first thing is just to line your lips on their actual natural lip line, which is what I'm gonna do now. Once you've lined your natural lip line, you wanna take a good look at your lips. Like close your mouth and have a good look. For me, you can see that my bottom lip is obviously a little fuller than my top lip. I don't have particularly big lips and I'm not trying to create big, big lips with my lip liner, what I'm trying to do is restore balance. So 
I'm not going to overline my bottom lip at all because my bottom lip is already plumper bigger than my top lip but my top lip is definitely smaller and you can see I almost have like a slightly concave line here like it bows inwards rather than going outwards now I'm not going to try and make it go whew, plump and outwards massively because that would look unnatural but I am going to slightly overline just here because that will make the line less in the shape and a little bit more straight. I'm also going to widen my cupid's bow very slightly and make that a little bit more pronounced. So I'll do it on one side so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's only very slightly overlined, but you can see this cupid's bow is now slightly bigger, slightly wider. I've overlined probably half way of this lip here. By the time it gets to the middle here, it's joining back to my natural lip line because you definitely, by the time you want to get closer to the edges of your mouth, need to be joining back to the edge of your lip line because overlining too close to the corners of your mouth looks completely ridiculous. Now I've done the other side. So you've got a matching set of lips. And I'm going to fill them in now completely with the lip liner because like I said, that can create a more lasting lipstick look. Now I've gone for a kind of rose pink and I think that's a really nice everyday kind of shade. Obviously what shade of pink suits you is going to depend on your skin tone. So I am neutral, heading a little bit warm and so I tend to go for a warmer rose pink. If you have more of a pink cool undertone, you can go for a more blue pink. Obviously, you know, if you want to go for a coral, a purple, a red, whatever, choose a lipstick that suits you and that you love and doing it very nicely and very neatly will really pull together a look and make it look like you put in a lot of effort. Now, obviously I've got a lot of pink blush going on, so pink is kind of working well and melding everything together. If I was going out in the evening, I'd probably choose a bold red, same eyes, same everything else pretty much. Um, maybe a slightly uh, warmer, less pinky tone of blush to complement the red lipstick, but it would really look like I put in effort, even though on my eyes I've just only got mascara and my skin is just like super basic. So now I'm going to go in with my lipstick. This is from number seven, and it's just going to be one that complements the lip liner. And there we are, and now I look professional. I look put together, I look like I know what I'm doing, I look awake, I look like I put in some effort, and it really wasn't that hard. Like if you weren't me chatting the way through it all the time, you could do this really, really quickly. Like if you practice this, you could probably do it in like 10 minutes. The longest thing is like overlining your lips, like, cause you have to kind of do that carefully. Um, but once you get practiced at it, you can do it reasonably quick. Um, the only thing I would say is if you really wanted to like, amp this up a little bit further, you could go in with some eyeliner, which I will add right now. Now, as someone with dark hair, I'm going to use a black eyeliner. If you are someone with a much lighter brown hair or blonde hair, I would recommend sticking with brown. But if you are dark hair, black will be just fine. Now, oh, that needs sharpening. Hmm, sharpener, sharpener, sharpener. Sharpener, sharpener, sharpener. That's better. I don't want it to be too sharp because I'm gonna line my tight line and I don't want to poke myself in the eye with something really pointy. Now, by tight line, if you don't know what that is, I mean this part underneath your lashes, which I know if you've never done this before, is a little bit off-putting to put eyeliner there. Obviously, you want to make sure it's a formula that doesn't irritate your eyes. So I would never put a new eyeliner that you've never used into your tight line. If you have a new eyeliner, I would always use it above the lash line and below the lower lashes first to make sure you don't get any irritation from it before you start putting it in your waterline, this lower one here, and your tight line, the upper one. But if you do tight line, it can really make your lashes look a bit thicker, make your eyes look a bit more defined. And it's not as scary as you might think. All you need to do, hold it vertically, look, push up here. And you're just pushing upwards, gently. You wanna poke yourself in the eye, obviously, so do it gently. Just move it across. 
That wasn't too hard, was it? You can do that. The other one. Now, you might also want to add a little bit above the lash line, just at the outer edges. Now, I'd recommend for this, you look down, just place it and just tap. It is obviously easier to put your eyeliner on before your mascara, but today we're doing it the other way around. Don't want to go crazy. I don't want to go beyond the centre of my eye. Just want to keep it to this outer edge. This is a lovely eyeliner, by the way. This is a McQueen waterproof pencil liner. They do a whole bunch of different neutral shades. Some lovely metallic bronzes. And they're really, really waterproof. So you're just keeping it to the outer edge. Get it in there to make sure there's no weird little pale gaps of skin. Again, I would recommend doing this before I before um, mascara usually. For where it ends, I like to look where the bottom of my eye comes round and then follow that line up. Follow the line up. And I don't like to go beyond that on a daily basis. A wing is a whole extra deal. We're not doing that today. For now, we're just talking about defining the eyes at the outer edges. I might add, I've disturbed my mascara a bit, so I'm gonna add a little bit more mascara on there. And there you have it. That's all you need to do. You look brightened, you look put together, you look like you made an effort, and all you really needed was a handful of products. You don't need a foundation, you don't need a ton of brushes, we didn't use any bronzer, we didn't use any contour, all that stuff is great and I love to use it and I love to like full on make up loads of products. But in order to look pretty and put together and awake and freshened, you don't need all of that. You just need some concealer, some blush, some mascara, and really like work on making that lip look like perfect center of the look because it will make you look so much more put together and professional and like i said if you want to turn this into an evening look all you got to do is switch out your nudes and your pinks for a bright red whether that's a warmer orange undertone red if you have warm toned skin or a more cool pink undertone red if you have more pink cooler toned skin so that's everything for today. I'm not gonna take my hair down to finish off the look because it's wet and it's in a plait and that is how it is gonna stay. But I hope you found this, I was just checking out lipstick on my teeth because I was worried for a second there. Um, I hope you found this useful, helpful. This is like, you know, if you're a beginner or you just don't have the time to bother with a ton of makeup, like you can do this with your hair wrapped up in a towel when you get out the shower before you dry it. Like. This is just so simple, so minimal, and in my opinion, so pretty. Like, I would go out like this. You don't need all those extra products necessarily. They're fun, yeah, but do you need them? You know, you can do a great look with only like a handful of things. So, yes, I hope that was helpful. I hope that this was enjoyable. Um, I have a bunch of other makeup videos with way more products and stuff going on than we had today so if you're interested in those please subscribe and check out some of my other videos um my name is Faye I don't know if I said that my name is Faye um <laughs> thanks for watching guys bye